Here's a hot take. Tree-based machine learning models are the easiest to implement and understand. So let's explore different types of tree-based models, starting from the most basic, a decision tree, to much more advanced models like random forests and gradient boosting. Then tell me if you think these models are easy to code up. Let's start with a simple decision tree classifier. We'll code in Python and use the famous iris data set from scikit-learn, which includes measurements of iris flowers and their species. So let's try to predict the species based on these measurements. So here's the code, and as you can see, we're importing scikit-learn and loading the iris data set. We're then splitting the data and training it in this line and importing the decision tree classifier in this line. Lastly, we'll visualize the tree itself. And now you can see how this classifier is separating out the data set into different categories. So let's break this apart. As you can see, the tree splits based off of the petal length and the width. This basically indicates that these are the key features for classification. The second is the purity of the nodes. As you can see, the nodes with a guinea index of zero are perfectly pure, meaning that all of the samples in that node belongs to one class. And then lastly, the cluster distribution. Each leaf node shows how many samples are classified into each class. So for instance, the leftmost leaf has 36 examples, all classified as versicolor. So now let's move on to something more advanced, random forests. So random forests are an ensemble learning method where multiple decision trees come together to make more accurate predictions. So here's the code. And as you can see, the only difference in the code is that we're calling in the random forest classifier and choosing 100 trees in our model. And after we train our model, we can predict the species of iris flowers in our test set. The accuracy of these predictions typically are much better than just having a single decision tree. And as you can see here, the accuracy is 0.95555. And now if we visualize a single decision tree from the random forest model, specifically the first tree, you'll notice that the model is classifying based on petal width, and then it'll refine based off of petal length. This basically demonstrates that the models has the ability to distinguish species. So that's not bad. So now let's talk about gradient boosting machines, GBMs. GBMs are another type of ensemble learning technique, but they work differently from a random forest. So while a random forest builds trees independently, GBMs will build them sequentially. Each new tree helps correct errors made by the previous one. So it's like each tree in the sequence is learning from the mistakes of the past trees, making the overall model much more accurate. So let's refactor our code. And as you can see, again, the only difference is the model I'm calling in. In this case, I'm calling in a gradient boosting classifier with 100 trees. And here's the output. Again, 0.955555. So a very accurate model. So now to understand how powerful this model is, let's visualize the mean square error. As you can see, the MSC drops sharply with initial iterations, indicating significant improvements in the model's performance. And after 20 iterations, the mean square error stabilizes. And this suggests that additional iterations do not contribute much to further reducing the error. So this means that the model has reached its optimal performance early and adding more iterations, more trees is not going to really make things more accurate. So now let's get into some challenges you might face when trying to implement decision trees. Number one is overfitting. It's one of the most common issues when trying to implement decision trees. Overfitting happens especially when the tree is too deep. It captures too much detail and complexity. So the model performs very poorly in this case. The solution here is to implement pruning techniques to limit the depth of the tree and use cross-validation to ensure that the model is generalized enough on the unseen data. Number two is handling continuous variables. Decision trees can struggle with continuous variables. They split these variables at various points, 
but finding the optimal split can be very tricky, especially when the continuous variable doesn't have a clear discrete boundary. So the solution here is to use discrete methods to convert continuous variables into categorical ones. It simplifies the decision-making process of the model. Number three is bias trees with imbalanced data. If your training data is in balance, the decision tree might become biased towards the dominant class. This bias can skew the predictions. So the solution here is to apply techniques like SMOTE, which stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique, or adjust class weights to balance the dataset before training on the model. Number four is complexity with large datasets. Decision trees are good at handling small to medium sized data sets, but the performance can be poor with large data sets. The time to train the trees increases significantly. The tree structure can become overly complex, making it hard to interpret. So the solution here is to use dimension reduction techniques or feature selection to reduce the data set size and complexity making the tree much more manageable. Number five is limited to linear decision boundaries only. Decision trees primarily create linear decision boundaries, which can be limited in scenarios where the relationship between features and the target variable is much more complex or nonlinear. So the solution here is to combine the decision tree model other algorithms like SVM support vector machines that can capture nonlinear relationships. And lastly, number six, sensitivity to small changes in data. Decision trees can be quite sensitive to small changes in your training data. A slight change can lead to a significantly different tree structure. This lack of stability can be a concern in dynamic environments where data changes frequently. So the solution here is to use ensemble methods like random forest or gradient boosting, which are much less sensitive to small data variations and offer much more stability. So that's basically it. That's a practical guide to decision trees, random forests, and GBMs. So now why don't you give it a try and try to implement one of these models? If you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel and go on to stratascratch.com to get data science resources. Thank you.